Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning into my talk. Uh, I believe, coincidentally, this talk might be an answer to David's problem with how to uh, make sure that all 200 projects in KDE get switched to uh, not out of starting KJOPs. But let's see. Let's see how it goes. So recently, I became a huge fan of static code analysis. So I decided to talk about static code analysis and about GitLab CI and about what you get when you bring those two things together. Spoiler alert, you get awesomeness. Uh, I'm sure everyone here knows what static code analysis is, but let me go quickly through it. Uh, it's like a second pair of eyes that checks your code. It's not just unit tests. It's actually uh, some tool looking at your source code, which means you need something that understands C++, and understanding C++ is not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, luckily, we have these things that understand C++ code really well. They are called the C++ compilers. So no surprise that the two major static analyzers that I'm going to mention throughout the talk are both based on the Clang C++ compiler. The two static analyzers that I want to talk about are Clazy and Clang Tidy. Uh, you may have heard about Clazy. Uh, Clazy is actually a KDE project. It's a static analyzer with a wide range of cute specific checks like this one, uh, for instance, if you use a non-static, uh, non-const Q vector in a range-based for loop, it's perfectly valid C++. It compiles, it works, except it's not ideal, right? Because uh, uh, using a non-const Qt container in a range-based for loop might detach the container. And this can easily skip uh, a pass uh, through a review, uh, especially if instead of Q vector int, it would, say just, it would just say auto. And if you often mix uh, standard containers, where this is perfectly fine, with Qt containers, it's easy to miss this, right? Luckily, Clayza will give you a warning that, eh, this is not OK. You should fix this. It can also possibly fix this for you even, but that's not the uh, point of this talk. Uh, another my favorite check, I think, in Clayza is this one. We have a little Q object class with an enum and a Q signal that has the enum as a parameter. This is, again, perfectly fine. It compiles. It works. It's a valid C++. And in a new connect syntax, it will work just fine. But if you use the old uh, Q4 connect syntax, this will not work because the argument needs to be fully qualified, as Clayze will tell you again. And uh, again, this is something that's easy to miss, especially if you are new to Qt or if you are using uh, not if you are not using Qt all the time, because then you, you need to remember. Oh, now I'm writing Qt. I need to remember to fully qualify my signal arguments. Uh, it's really useful to have a tool that checks this for you. Um, the other static analyzer that I talked about is Clang Tidy. Uh, Clang Tidy is uh, part of the LLVM project, so it's actually developed as part of the Clang compiler. You get it with, uh, alongside the compiler with other Clang tools. Uh, it has a wide range of generic C++ checks, right? So it can check for uh, bug prone statements like this one, which is perfectly fine. Again, it compiles, it runs, it works, except when you compile without a search, suddenly this decrement will not happen anymore because the compiler will remove the whole line because you wanted to remove asserts. Um, so Clang Tidy will warn you that this is a bug prone statement. You should fix it. Uh, it can also help you with code quality. Uh, so I'm sure every single KDE project has uh, something like this somewhere in the code. So uh, a magical constants defined as a, uh, as a macro. Uh, Clang Tidy will tell you, why don't you use const expert? It's exactly the same as a macro, and it's type safe. So static code analysis is super useful. It is very helpful, uh, especially if you can do it as part of a review process, because then the reviewer can actually focus on the big things, on the ideas, and on the actual what the code does, rather than having to uh, focus or pay attention to, this small, to these small things, like, uh, like uh, not fully qualified uh, argument in a queue signal and similar. So I guess it would be really nice to get this, right? To use this. And the question is, why are we not even using this for, for all our projects? 
I, I, I ran this on, uh, on the Akonadi code base and I uncovered quite a few bugs or issues that both Clank, Tidy, and Clazy warned me about and I, I, I could fix them. The problem is that I ran it once, I think, after a very, very long time. And uh, I got like lots of issues and I've spent several evenings just fixing them and it was not fun. It must be much, it would be much better if we were able to sort of do this incrementally, right? Uh, of course, there's not no problem if you want to run it every single, uh, like, you know, you sit down before the release, you run st static analyzers on the whole code base, you fix everything, and then after three months, you do it all again. But then it's not really good, it's not comfortable, and uh, we have tooling to do that for us. Uh, so I thought like maybe we could do this, maybe we could do this uh, for each pull request, right? So this is where the second part of the talk comes in uh, about GitLab CI. Uh, here I, I want to pause here and say just big thank you and kudos to the sysadmin team and everyone who was involved in switching over to GitLab. I'm so happy we have that finally. Uh, uh, GitLab CI, you may have heard about it. I think it was a Friday. It was mentioned on the Friday training about GitLab as well. It's well, it's a CI, and it's built directly into GitLab. It's basically like our own Jenkins, the build KD York, except this is actually part of GitLab. What that means is that it can execute the jobs on not just uh, on each commit, but also on particular events. Like for for instance. It can execute your uh, CI job or CI pipeline on each pull request. And I'm sure you know where I'm heading with this. Uh, how, how can I get this? How can I get my own uh, GitLab CI jobs for my KDE projects? This is another advantage of uh, GitLab CI. With the old Jenkins setup, uh, this is all managed by the sysadmin team. And basically, what we every project get the same treatment, right? We all. Uh, all the projects are just compiled, tests are executed, and that's it. There is no point where you can customize it at your own settings and whatnot. So luckily in GitLab CI, all you need to do to get uh, your project, to create a pipeline for your project is you need to create .gitlab-ci.yaml file in the top level of your uh, Git repository. And there you can define your pipelines. Uh, how, what, how to put it up? Well, again, our sysadmins are super awesome and they created uh, existing definitions. So you just put in these two, you in, include these two YAML files, which contain, defi contain definitions for the pipelines and the jobs in there. So for instance, this one, a CI before is just some templates and the CI applications Linux, this will create a job for a KDE application uh, project as a CI frameworks and CI extra gear. And then this will create a particular job for Linux. There's also free BSD and Windows. So if you just include whatever you need, you'll get automatically created jobs, right? So if your project is not interested in uh, Windows or doesn't work on Windows, you just don't include that file that creates the job. And if you want to define your own job that does magic, well, you just define it in your YAML file and you get it. So you as a project developer, you can really customize this, which I think is really awesome. And well, as part of that, uh, I thought, well, maybe I could, we could get uh, static analysis as part of that as well, right? Uh, actually, this all started when, after, shortly after the migration to GitLab when uh, Loran, Montel went and he added uh, some sort of initial uh, static analyzer set up into all the KDE uh, repositories. Unfortunately, it didn't work. So I guess so first I started removing them from, from, from the repos. Then I realized, well, this actually might be super useful. Uh, let's try to figure out how to do it properly uh, so that we can get a proper green pipeline. So this was the first attempt. Uh, nasty, I know, it's complicated. And really, you don't want everyone to copy paste this into their GitLab YAML. Uh, it's hard to change. It requires committing additional files into the repository. It was it was bad. So I 
in, I, I took some inspiration from the existing include files and just uh, created the job and the pipeline in the uh, in the sysadmin repo. Or oh, well, it's not there yet, but uh, later on that. And all you need to do is you just include this file and you uh, add this include into the GitLab CI YAML. And then uh, you also create the new job, which you do by uh, saying, well, this is the name of my job, and it just ex extends this template. It, 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 right now, it cannot be auto-created, like the, uh, for instance, applications Linux jobs, which you don't need to define anywhere. They just get automatically created. Uh, it's because either I'm too bad with uh, the GitLab CI stuff, or because I because maybe it cannot be done better. Uh, anyway, this is how you get it. And magically, suddenly, what you get is a CI, new CI job called static analysis that gets executed on every single, every new pull request. And again, whenever you commit, add a new commit to the branch. So what exactly does this job do? First, it builds the entire project. Uh, you have to do it because the static analyzer it needs for the code to compile, right? And unfortunately, with Qt, we have a lot of files that are generated as part of the compilation step. So we have the mock files, the UI files, the dbus adapters, and whatnot. That all this all needs to get generated, and so that uh, so that it can when it's included from some other C++ file, the compiler actually has access to these includes. Otherwise, the, the, the compiler just says, can't compile. I will not do any static analysis on this. So I did some really crazy stuff to get it com to try to get only the generated files without having to compile everything, but uh, it failed. Uh, I was not able to force make or CMake to only do the generation. If anyone knows how to do that, how to force CMake or make to only generate all the files without, that needs to be generated without having to compile everything, that would be tremendous. Uh, I even tried like crazy check, create some crazy ideas like uh, uh, creating a script that defers to a real compiler at configure time, but then does nothing at build time except of creating empty files. So it would be much faster. Uh, but then it failed it, it already in Akonadi because in Akonadi we have a custom uh, utility that needs to be compiled first, and then it is fed another an XML file and it generates some more C++ code from that that then gets included uh, from other places in Akonadi. So uh, when I sort of fake compile this generator, it obviously didn't work and the compilation failed anyway, and the static analyzer failed anyway. So I ended up uh, going with a let's just compile everything. Uh, we had some discussion with Ben about this on, on, on the review. Uh, maybe the solution to this would be to put the static analyzer as a test stage after the build, after the regular main build, so the Linux build, so that it couldn't reuse the build directory created in the in the regular build job. The next step that uh, this this job does is it finds changed C++ files. Uh, first, I just try to run it on everything. The problem is there is a one hour timeout or time limit for uh, for the uh, job, and with Akonadi, uh, I was around fifty nine minutes, and then sometimes it timed out. Uh, it's already like just pulling the dependencies and doing the initial build takes about 20 minutes. So then you're left with only 40 minutes to do the static analysis of everything. And I don't think Akonadi is too big. It's not the biggest project out there, definitely not. And uh, static analyzers are slow because they do a lot of checking and thinking. Uh, so uh, I realized, well, I do not need to check the whole code base every time. All I need to do is I need to figure out which files have changed on this branch, and I only need to check those files. So the static analyzer job is now much faster because it only checks the files that have actually changed uh, for, for errors. Uh, then, obviously, it runs the Clazy and Clank tidy on those changed files, and ultimately, it generates a code quality report file. Initially, I was using JUnit uh, format, but then I was pointed at the code quality uh, format, which actually integrates it better into the GitLab CI. 
The major advantage is that you get the report directly in the pull request uh, view of GitLab. This is what it looks like. Looks like so. This is a pull request on my test repository, and where I uh, intentionally introduced some issues. And you can see that I already got uh, two crazy warnings there that uh, I'm missing a reference on non-trivial type, and that a signal argument needs to be fully qualified. So this you get as part of your pull request. You see it in the in the GitLab CI in the pull request window, and that's that's uh, awesome for re both for reviewers and for the developer because the developer knows that uh, this needs some uh, some more work, and and of course the pipeline has failed because of that. So you can see that the pipeline is red. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really set at this point. We we don't have. It configured that you could not merge if the pipeline is red. I would love to be able to say, uh, no, you cannot merge until the pipeline is green, but uh, we'll see. Uh, back to the YAML file, just to uh, show you how you, what can be customized. Is, uh, so this for the first two lines, you know that static analysis is the job definition. The extends shows that uh, the job should be based on a template called dot static analysis. And then you can add variables, and then uh, where you can customize some of the variables which have the default. Uh, the first analyzer, the first variable is called analyzers. Uh, it's a comma separated list of analyzers, so classic clang tidy here. Uh, you can choose only classic or only clang tidy. And in the future, there might be more checks that you might wish to turn on or off. Uh, CXX flags. Uh, you may want to disable deprecated uh, warnings because very often you can't do anything about deprecation. So uh, deprecated uh, deprecated warnings because they might be coming from a third party library, right? So you uh, that this would break your uh, code analysis. So you can just disable suppress them uh, through CXX flex argument, which is then passed to the static analyzers. Uh, and then there are uh, classes specific chat uh, arguments, which are for place ignore there. So if you should ignore anything coming from a particular directory or includes coming from a particular directory, so in this case, user include, we don't want warnings about queued being wrong. Uh, as well as, uh, for instance, in Akonadi, I've put in there uh, some third party folders uh, or, or a third party folder because I don't want classes to do checks on a third party library that we have uh, included or embedded. Uh, and then Clazy checks, so you can, of course, customize with which checks you want Clazy to run. So maybe you want all of them, or maybe you just want the level zero, level one. This is up to you. Uh, I believe this is the default that I just copy pasted from the uh, from the definition. For Clank tidy to customize it, you just create a .clank tidy file in the root of your Git repository. Uh, I will not go into details how to Customize it here. Uh, you can check the website, the homepage of Clank Tidy. It's very well documented uh, on how it looks like and what it looks like and what you can put in there. Uh, this needs some consideration and, and a lot of uh, testing because uh, if you enable just all the checks, it will be crazy. The, even some of the checks are like sort of contradictory because. Uh, they have there are some like default checks or CPP core guidelines, bug pro statements, performance issues. These are cool, but then there are other Google specific guidelines or LLVM project specific guidelines and then Fuchsia specific guidelines. And if those some of those checks they clash with each other, so you fix it to to fix uh, to be uh, for Google checks to not complain, and suddenly LLVM checks start complaining. So uh, you need to be really careful with which ones you want. Uh, of course, uh, the future that I would like to get to is uh, to also include things like QML lint and PyLint and run those on the changed QML files and Python files and maybe more. Uh, the code is written in a way that should allow for this rather easily. So uh, it's mostly about just introducing some way to convert from the output format of those tools into the code report or code quality format that GitLab understands. The conclusion, unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish all of this bef before Academy, as I was, was hoping to. Uh, it's already on pull request to the sysadmin repository, but it is not yet uh, there. Uh, it works, but it still needs some a little bit of polishing and discussion. I hope to get it merged or done during Academy. Uh, 
of course, if you really, really want to help out or try it out and help, maybe do some beta testing, yeah, you can ping me on IRC or or, uh, or Matrix, and I can point you to the right repositories where, where this lives and what, which, how you can include it into your repository for testing right now. Uh, ultimately, I realized this should be a default for frameworks in Plasma. Uh, definitely, I would like to work on uh, uh, getting those uh, at least basic classic and clank time static analysis uh, enabled for by default for all frameworks repositories and uh, Plasma, I, I believe, depends on uh, if the Plasma maintainers wish wish to do so. But I think at least for frameworks as a sort of one of the flagship products, we should definitely have that. And that's all from me. So some time for questions. Thank you. All right. Let's start with the questions off with question number one. Can the content of GitLab dash CI dot YML file be run locally? Uh, somewhat, yes. Uh, you can uh, download the Docker file uh, that's used on uh, GitLab CI. Uh, and then you can take the commands that are specified in the GitLab CI. There is a section uh, in the GitLab CI file. Uh, in the includes file, there is a section script or script where it actually lists the commands that are executed during the test. So if you enter the Docker, Docker container and you copy paste those commands, you basically are able to run, uh, run the, the checks in the same environment as in which they will run on the, on the GitLab CI. It's not like that you could just say, uh, uh, it's not like that you could just say, you know, like push a button or run a command and it would sort of run your GitLab worker with everything in it. That, I haven't found a way to do that. OK. Next question. Is it safe to run a YML with includes from the internet? Well, if you know where they are coming from, I don't see a reason why not. OK. Next question. Is it a complete opt-in system, or will there be a massive switch in the future where all projects get pipelines automatically? Um, this is, I think, more of a question to the C7 team. As far as I know, the idea in the long term is to move from Jenkins to uh, GitLab CI, but I think better some, some sysadmin uh, answer this, this question. OK. Next question, then. Do you have experience with Clang Static Analyzer? I think Clang Tidy, uh, Tidy <laughs> has some integration with it, but I don't know if you can use Tidy alone and get all the checks. I believe Clank Tidy has, uh, uh, I think Clank Tidy has, one of the checks in Clank Tidy is static analyzer, which runs the Clank static analyzer stuff. So, and then it has all these additional checks on top of the Clank static analyzer. So yes, you can run Clank Tidy uh, individually and get the Clank static analyzer plus all the rest. All right. Next question. Can GitLab CI run tests? Yes, if you configure it. I think uh, I think uh, the YAML file. I'm not sure if this is enabled by default uh, in the currently defined sets, but actually, yes, I think it is because some of our projects have failing tests on GitLab CI. So yes, you get tests run automatically, even with you, if you just include the, the YAML file from, from sysadmin. All right, two more questions. Uh, next is, will our infra explode doing all the <laughs> hacks? Uh, it might, but that's uh, that's one of the reasons why I uh, why I think that, uh, or why I went for the approach of doing only checking the files that have actually changed in the pull request. So usually, I mean. Sure, you can do a pull request which changes everything, but usually in pull request, you, or in your change, you only touch a few files, so it's reasonably fast. So it should not explode. Okay. Fingers crossed. All right. It looks like we have an eighth question coming in, but question number seven is: Is there a template slash documentation to add to this project? Eh, not yet. Uh, I think uh, once this all settles and it's merged into. Uh, Merge into the sysadmin repository. I definitely write down some uh, something on a on a on a on a wiki so that uh, uh, 
anyone can just copy paste it into their own GitLab CI. Okay, great. All right, last question is still being typed. We only have like 30 seconds. Let's see if we can do it. Does your thing properly detect changes in headers that propagate to many CPP files? Uh, well, if you if you change the oh, I see what you mean. Uh, I actually do not know. I haven't tried just changing a header file and seeing if the static analyzer checks it. That's a good question. Thank you. I'll I'll make sure to to check that.